this video we'll talk about principal stress. If you still remember back in our our stress system, we have this 2D, 2D view. And we have a basis factor, if you still remember, this basis factor is just some axis. Alright, some axis. Call this uh, x1 and I call this x2. Okay? If I were to apply a force in this direction, then the sigma 1 1. I apply the force at this direction in sigma 2 2. If I were to apply a force in sigma 1 2 direction, this means that I'm going to have a shear force that will shear this thing in this direction. Right. Alright. Now, there comes a principal stress. What is principal stress? Principal stress means that at a certain correct angle, at a certain correct angle, I'd apply a sigma. One, all right. A normal stress perpendicular to this, to this thing. All right. In other words, if I have a stress acting on this side, this certain angle. All right. We call it sigma one, and I have another perpendicular stress acting on this angle. I call this sigma two. And at this particular angle, all right. If I were to have a sigma one two. Right in purple color. All right in purple color, that is trying to shear this part. It's very tough to shear, right? At this part over here. This is very tough to shear, at this portion. So you can't shear this, this thing. Correct. And therefore, this is the understanding of principal stress. The principal stress is meaning that you have a certain direction, at a certain solid object all right and this 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 um forces has a certain perpendicular plane that is, per that is perpendicular to this force all right perhaps i should draw a better one which is somewhere like that this plane is a virtual plane i would believe because i think because this is something that i come up with all right this aspiration sounds nice but anyway so therefore, this virtual plane, as you can see over here in purple color, is this one, right? So virtually, if you were to 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 so-called shear this thing, definitely the virtual plane will be sheared. But the cur but the real real block over here does can cannot be sheared, right? Because because practically it cannot shear, cannot be sheared at this at this configuration. You try to Share share a cube in this configuration. I don't think you can do that. All right. So therefore, this purple color one is a virtual one, and we call this and we call this sigma one and sigma two a. Um, all right. This virtual plane we call this the principal plane. And the stresses we call this the principal stresses. Where there will be no shear at all. There will be no shear acting on a solid object. That is just the meaning. Okay, I hope this might be correct. I don't know. This may be wrong. So therefore, I'll just add this into my what I don't know. Physically, what is principal stress? Therefore, if you were to take a look in this purple region and the, the black region, alright, this purple region is shown in the text document in a 2D basis over here. This is the purple of this is the purple one, the virtual one, and this is the real object. Okay, I may be wrong, but th that's why I'll just continue right here. Uh, what's nice is that we know that there will be a certain configuration such that we will have no shear stress. We will only have a normal stress or perhaps a normal stress in terms of a virtual plane acting on a true solid object so to speak right this is more and more and more complicated right but in other words there exists a plane or a, a, a virtual understanding that there will be no shear stress at all right that's the meaning of it okay and therefore can be extended into the 3d zone all right there exists a 3d cube at this portion over here all right and based on our understanding, there will be a certain configuration, a virtual configuration such that we can actually 
um, apply a certain force that it will not apply any shear stress at all. Alright, so the shear stress are all zero, but the principal stress are all there. Alright, and this principal stress are, I think, is a virtual stress. Okay, therefore, if such the case happen, then how can we know what is the stress over here? How much stress can be applied over here? Alright, such that we will have no shear stress. That is the question, right? And therefore, we know that this is the configuration of a true, true cube with a certain state. Um, state what? <laughs> or oh, stress state? Sorry, stress state. Alright, it describes the stress of the the state of the cube in terms of its stress. Alright, and this is minus with this one. Alright. It's somewhat like if you remember back the lambda i minus a b is equals to zero. We are finding the the values of um, lambda. This is talking about eigenvalue. If you still remember, so we are actually applying the same concept as this one. So the lambda is actually sigma, a principal stress. So I'm si so instead of lambda uh, sigma i minus a, I also can take a minus sigma i. All right is equals to zero and set it equals to zero and then I solve I solve for the determinant of this whole matrix this is a matrix and then I can straight away find what is my value for sigma okay so this is our approach right now okay so this is it this one the simple the the real cube I would say is this configuration the virtual cube all right is this configuration Alright, so I take this one minus away this one. What I have is this one. Okay, so that is one, two, and three lah. Okay, but to keep it simple, I'll just write in terms of sigma will do. Okay, so I'm just in terms of the matrix. Now I'll take the determinant of this matrix, meaning the determinant will be everything equals to zero. Alright, meaning I'll take this one, multiply by this one times this one, minus away this one times this one. So for example, is this one, right? So this one is over here, multiply by this one times this one minus this one times this one, all right? So just describe it, it's describing this region, and then the rest is just same 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 method to solve for determinant. So sigma one two times sigma one two times this one, and things like that. And in the end, what you have is after solving for the determinant, the general equation is something like this, okay? which is sigma cube minus away something sigma square plus really a big chunk of a constant times sigma minus a big chunk of a constant all right taking the fact taking the fact that our sigma our um sigma 1 2 and sigma 1 2 are the same all right sigma 3 1 in fact this is sigma 1 3 all right so sigma 3 1 and sigma 1 3 are the same that's why that's that is what I want to say. Alright? So sigma this is sigma two three also. So in other words, sigma three one is equals to sigma one three, sigma two three is equals to sigma three two and and whatever. Alright, it's a symmetry matrix. So they take in consideration into sym the symmetry matrix, eventually you'll see something like a square over here. Alright, sigma one two square. This is in fact sigma two one times sigma one two, something like that. Okay? Hopefully you get what I mean. Thi and in fact this is just simply the determinant of this one okay that's all and this determinant all right if I were to to, to make it more simple is that I call this I1 and I call this whole thing I2 and I call this whole thing I3 so I'm just simply subbing this whole constant as I2, I1, I2, and I3. And what I will have back is simply this form over here. <coughs> Alright, if, if you feel that this is not very familiar, I'll just let you know that this is something like that. You can also rewrite as lambda. Sorry, this should be like a lambda. Sorry. <sighs> what am I doing? Lambda square plus I2 lambda minus I3 is equal to 0. 
as you can see the, then you can solve for like like somewhat like an eigenvalue type of question all right i'm just saying if it, if, if it doesn't seem familiar to you all right so i'm just simply saying that this is like stress now right now in our in our equation so i1 is simply the coefficient for this one i2 is simply the coefficient for this one all right taking the fact that the stress tensor is symmetry meaning sigma 1 3 is equals to sigma 3 1 sigma 1 2 is equals to sigma 2 1 etc all right the additional information comes over here all right in fact this thing all right can be represented as this one okay they are the same thing all right how do they become the same all right this is if you find the determinant of this one minus the determinant of this one and this one what do I have all right so sigma 1 1 sigma 2 2 all right minus away sigma 1 2 square <coughs> sorry and then minus sigma 1 1 3 sigma 3 3 so I'm just simply take multiply this one minus away this one multiply by this one all right what I have is sigma 1 3 cube square all right and therefore I have this one this one is the determinant of this one this one is the determinant of this one this one is the determinant of this one <coughs> okay so if you look at this term six, sigma 1 1 and sigma 2 2 is this term sigma 1 1 and sigma 3 3 is this term sigma 2 2 and sigma 3 3 is this one all right and then 1 2 square is this one 1 3 square is this one and then 1 2 3 square is this one all right so what can we get from this information is that this whole thing is equals to this one which is also equals to this whole whole matrices being represented over here all right and this matrices is the relationship between um between this sigma one one and sigma two two all right and their relationship is sigma one two symmetry is over here all right likewise for sigma um 3 3 and sigma 2 2 all right if all right so it's just the relationship between each of the planes that's all so you can see that there's a certain relationship between them all right it's just an interaction between a plane and another plane all right and the shear stress between both of them both of the planes and things like that but in terms of the meaning wise i I don't know, I'll just leave you to think about it. But yeah, and likewise for this this whole chunk over here, it can be re represented as a 3x3 three three matrix over here. Alright? And I'll just leave you to this um, understandings. And yeah, this is the principal stress. Before I go, okay, we say that this is I1, this whole thing, and this whole thing is I2. And this whole thing is I3. Alright? And why is it I is because they are invariant. Invariant, invariant means what? Invariant means that it remains unchanged during a certain transformation. Alright? The transformation in this case, we will say that it's a time transformation. Okay? And therefore, this virtual, this virtual cube, the, act, the, the X on this reliability cube, Alright, this virtual cube have a certain virtual principal stress as on this reality cube will always be the same no matter how what time you 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 you, you tilt it or how time you shear it and a long time you actually move this thing from one place to another all right you also will not change so this i1 i2 i3 all right is somewhat represented in your pitch right here all right and that it will they are not they doesn't they are not subjected to any changes anymore they're always invariant and that's is just the coefficient of your your determinant of your stuff okay and therefore to to sum out all right just just to say that this is in fact our principal stresses all right which is normal or perpendicular to our principal plane and the principal plane is is somewhat this one this is a principal cube or a virtual cube and the principal plane is this plane and the virtual stress or the principal stress 
is this stress sigma 1 and then this is sigma 2 this is sigma 3 so principal stress is simply this one with all the shear as you know nothing much therefore this is a summary of this video you can take a look and the description and is in the description below i'll see you in the next video for other stresses